In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace a fuel injector on a 4.9 Ford straight six. It's located under the upper plenum on a Ford F-150. Disconnect the negative terminal on the battery, eight millimeter or five sixteenths wrench or socket. Make sure you set that aside. Disconnect the air tube. Now you can leave it attached to the air box if you wish and take the mass airflow sensor out or just take the hose off. 5 16 flathead screwdriver or eight millimeter socket. We'll take the clamps off, this three total. And then two down on the throttle body itself. Just need to loosen the clamps up so that the air breather tube can come off. Take the vent hose out of the valve cover and just pull. Now we need to access the throttle body cable, so I'm going to take the plastic protective shield off. And with a body tool, we'll just pop this little plastic pin out. Then you can grab that plastic cover, pull it right up over that tab. Now I'm going to disconnect the throttle body cable from the throttle body. I'm just going to use my body tool and push out just like that. Disconnect the IAC valve connector, pull up on the tab, pull it out, and it also has the harness, has a little lock tab on the bracket. Now I'm going to disconnect the TPS sensor and the vacuum go into the EGI valve. I do have a bracket down below here that I need to disconnect. 15 millimeter socket, I'm going to take that bracket off. take the bolt out of the top part of the bracket, shall I say. Now I'm going to take the vacuum hose off the brake booster. Just twist and pull off. Now from the passenger fender, I'm going to release all the vacuum lines or emission lines from this side. You just take them right off that throttle body, take that assembly, and twist it out of the way. We also have this vacuum line I'm going to take away from here. And then the red one, which goes over here. There is a vacuum diagram on your hood if you don't keep a good record, but nowadays with phones, you should be able to take a picture prior and you should be all set. Disconnect this line that goes down below because we're gonna lift this plenum right up. There we go. Now, if you have an EGR tube that's connected, you're gonna need to disconnect that. It's usually a 15, 16 or one inch wrench. Ours has been taken out, so unfortunately I can't do that. There's one more PCV hose connection right here. Now you can leave that attached and just take the PCV valve out of the valve cover. Now we have to remove the emission bracket. It's attached here on the alternator bracket and then down below on the upper plenum. So 13 millimeter socket or half inch, take this bolt out. Down below here, there's a stud, and there should be a nut on there. This one is missing, so you're just going to push the bracket out after you take that nut off. Now you have a better view of the upper plenum and where it's connected to the lower intake. I'm just going to take a bungee cord and secure this air pump out of the way. You see there's one vacuum line here. Just connect that from the valve. A little bit easier to get to. So now to take this off, all the bolts are facing upwards, so the heads of them are facing down. You can raise the vehicle if it's easier or through the fender well. I'm just going to stay right where I am. And there's two mounting brackets, so I'm going to take that one off first. It goes to a coolant tube, 13 millimeter or half inch socket. And I'm going to take that nut right off so that 
I can get to the actual stud holding the upper intake on. There is the bracket. The other nut is in the back. The other bracket is right here. So three bolts in, 13 millimeter. Okay, I loosened it. I'm just gonna move over to a stubby ratchet. Now that that tube is free, I'll just let it fall down, hang down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the upper plenum studs out. They have a little bit of a stud at the end of the head bolt, 13 millimeters, so you're gonna to need to use a deep socket. Probably gonna just break them all free. Then I'll get a little air tool in there and see if I can get it out faster. That's what they look like. Like I said, if you need to go down below to get to these back ones, feel free. I'm just gonna do it all from the top here. Like I said, there's seven of these, so go ahead and take them all out. These are gonna be the two most difficult to get to. Just make yourself comfortable. There it is. So now you're gonna take your hands and firmly grab this upper plenum, upper intake. This pin's located along the side there, so you have to just kind of lift up, get everything clear out of the way. So now we're gonna disconnect the fuel feed line and the return line. Return line is always gonna be the smaller of the two. And they have these little safety tabs. You just pop them off. Go ahead and do it on both. And now you need the special tool that disconnects that line from that rail. And they look a lot like this. There's different styles out there. But this is also for AC lines. Anything that has these spring, there's a circle spring in there that needs to get released. So you're gonna just match up the size you need. Sometimes I'll use a pair of pliers to help squeeze that in there. We gotta release that spring. It's not, the older the car, the more difficult it is because that spring's been in there for a while. And then there's also this tool, which is really old school, but this truck is old school. So we're gonna use the metal butterfly one. See if we can get that spring to release. Just pre-wheeling to see if I can get those springs to release. They've probably been in there for a while. There you go. The tool disconnected that spring and that's the return line. That's the spring I'm talking about. And here comes the fuel supply. Now I'm going to get some caps, cap those off and cap the rail off. So I save the caps through the years on everything, and this just helps where there's no residual gas just dripping out. That's what all I'm trying to do. Let's keep those aside. So now I'm gonna take all the injector harnesses, disconnect them from the injector, 
Each one of them has a tab, some on two sides. This one's pretty old, so it looks like someone's been in there and broke them. I like to use a small screwdriver or anything you can get in there that's easier to push that tab back. Just, uh, I'll just see if I can get an easy one for you. Right here. And then just lift up on it. You can spin the injectors, don't be afraid. This one has both tabs. So while you're pulling on it, giving it a slight pull, you can push up on both tabs and it'll come right off. As you can see, this one, the emission tube, has been taken off. If your emission tube is still on, you're going to need to take that out to get this injector rail up. Last one. Okay, we can pull the harness aside. Now we're gonna take our mounting bolts off this. Three of them, one, two, three. So this is 11 millimeter or a 7 16 So I like to take some parts cleaner and I like to spray the base of where those injectors are so that it can get in there and get rid of any dirt and make sure that that O-ring is a little bit easier to manipulate out. So now grabbing that fuel rail firmly, I like to pick, take a pair of needle nose or anything equivalent and I'm just going to pry up slowly until I can see the seal it starts to show itself. And then sometimes, voila, the rest of it will just pop right out. Now I can grab that fuel rail and lift it up. Don't forget that there's going to be residual fuel inside there, so watch it when you lift it up. Make sure you don't let any fuel out of that rail. So here you have your injector rail with all six injectors. I'm just going to change one of them to show you how to do all of them. I'm just going to grab it, spin and twist and pull until that injector comes out. You can do that to all six of them. Now to install the new one, already comes with O-rings on it, ready to go. I like to use gasoline or parts cleaner. Do not use a silicone or grease or anything like that. It actually inhibits from seeding properly. Just twist and push in. And there you go. Now to reinstall the fuel injector rail, I like to line up the injectors with each porthole, and then we have to push them all in. So I like to use brake clean or parts or carburetor cleaner and spray each seal. It works, it evaporates faster, and it's better than any penetrating spray or anything that would has petroleum in it that will expand that O-ring. And then just push down, it falls right into place. And you have your three mounting screws. I'm gonna hand tighten them, and then we'll Get the spec and tighten those right down. So now we're going to torque down the fuel injector rail and the spec is 70 to 105 inch pounds, which basically comes out to 8.8 .8 foot pounds. So I have an 11 millimeter socket or a 7 16 and I'm going to snug it from the center and then go out. Check. 
Now I'm going to grab the harness and I'm going to reset the harness over here so I can connect all the injectors, place this right in the spot it was at. Fish that O2 sensor down here, and we can reconnect that. That's the uh, green on green. To your click, we have one more over here. Make sure that gets all out of the way. Get my vacuum lines in place. As you can see, several of them broke. That's because they're pretty brittle. That's very common. So that is going to be the cool temp sensor. Now I'm going to locate each injector harness and snap it back into place. I'm going to disconnect our regulator because I think the vacuum line is going to be in the way. Don't be afraid to twist and turn the injectors. You can to line up the harnesses. I like to lay them all down so that they don't get in the way. Last one. Okay. I'm going to run these vacuum lines underneath in the opening here. All right, put this regulator vacuum line on. Just make sure you grab all your vacuum lines, get them pre-set up so that you're not trying to fidge with them when that upper intake is on. I'm just grabbing this insulation and getting it out of our way because after almost 30 years, it's pretty much not doing anything other than being a menace. So now that we've got our harness all in place, fuel lines in place, we're gonna put the actual fuel lines on the injector rail and connect those. Now we have the smaller and the larger side. The larger side is the feed side. That's the back line here. I'm going to put the front one on first and we're going to hear that spring click into place. Give it a pull, make sure it doesn't come off. Put that safety clip right on. Let's do the same to the rear. Line that line up until you hear it click. Now I'm going to grab my upper plenum gasket, line that up. I have two plastic pin holes here. This back one was broken way before I started, but I kind of took a little punch and pushed it up enough so it seats that gasket. Now we can grab our upper intake and fit it in. Now we're going to grab that upper intake and we have to fish these lines through. I might actually take this fuel regulator line off. I think it's going to be easier to Manipulate that once I get everything off. This one's going to be tough too because I have to weasel it through and support this at the same time. Let's give it a shot. You get your PCV line, these heater hoses. Now I'm going to push this vacuum line right up through. There we go. Let's bring the plenum up over and line those pins up. right down in place. PCV valve is located in the back here. I'm just going to feel for it, put it right in the grommet. And now I'm going to get my bolts and put them up through the bottom so that I can get ready to torque it. So there's seven bolts in total 
And I'm gonna take the two that have the clean threads on them, because I have to put nuts on these, for these, that air vent tube bracket. So I know where they go. This one goes right here. I'm just gonna hand start everyone. The other one goes here. And this will also help me from having this upper intake shift a little bit and do any damage to that gasket, which is not what we want. Okay, now feel free to start mounting the rest of the studs. Seven total. two of the hardest ones to get to. Let's see if you can set them all by hand. That's the best to do. Because we're going to put the bracket on the other side so that the manifold is actually in the correct position before we tighten these ones down. So now we're on the driver's side and we have that one bracket that holds the whole upper intake in place. And I'm going to put the mounting bolt in because you want to make sure that that's supporting it before you torque the other seven on the other side. There we go, it's threaded in, so now I know that this intake is all lined up. I don't have to try to line that up after. So now with the vehicle raised up and from underneath, I'm getting it with a long extension. I'm gonna tighten the upper plenum gaskets on that lower intake. There's seven volts, like I said, and it's 12 to 18 foot pounds. I'm gonna start from the center and go out. I have a 13 millimeter socket, so 13 or half inch socket. Okay, and move to the next one. I also have a little 3-8 swivel on here. That might help you be able to get better seating on that. Now I'm gonna move to the front. One more in the front here. Last one's right in the center. So now we're gonna hook our air pump bracket back up to the alternator and air pump bracket. I'm gonna take my bungee cord off so I can line all the emission tubes back up in the vacuum lines. Make it much easier to mount that bracket underneath. So you have this one stud in the front and this bolt here. Now it didn't have a nut on the stud that goes on the up lower intake. I'll probably put one on there. Like I said, a while ago someone's been in here and they just kind of threw it together. I'm trying to make it work best I can. Half inch or 13. Now I'm going to line up that emission tube on those studs down below that feed that upper intake and attach it to the lower. And that's where we have our washers and nuts. We're going to attach that stud up by hand. There's two of them total. half inch or 13 millimeter socket. We'll just snug those right up. So now we're going to tighten up the bracket that holds the upper plenum on. And it's a, for me, it's a 15 millimeter socket. You might be different. I'm just going to bottom it out, then torque it. Okay. 
The torque spec is 22 to 32. So now we're on this side. So I torqued that bracket. Now I'm going to hook up all my electrical and my throttle body and vacuum lines. So let's start with the EGI valve. That's a green plastic vacuum hose. The throttle body sensor. Click it on. The IAC valve. Push it till it clicks. And then the throttle body cable has that round port that connects to that little ball and it will snap right in, just like that. Then I'm gonna follow my vacuum line right over to the brake booster and just wiggle it back and forth till it pops in. Make sure it's flush, it has to be nice and seated. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna put my cover on of that throttle body cable. So there's a notch right here, this plastic sleeve that it's gonna go down over and line up, and a little body pin, push pin that goes right there. Now we can connect our air intake hose. We got two ports on the throttle body, wiggle them till they seat, then over here on the air box cover. Make sure that is flush. Put your vent in. Now we're gonna take a 9 16 or flathead screwdriver, and we're gonna tighten those three clamps. You want to make sure those are snug. A vacuum leak will cause a running havoc. Now I'm going to start attaching my vacuum lines. And I've got the two ports here that go to the throttle body. And follow that right over to this valve right here. This cream color white line goes to a connector right below this valve. Seat it. Then I have my fuel pressure regulator, which is gonna go like this, easily. Bring that in. See the regulator right underneath that intake? That hose is gonna go right there. Like I said earlier, this vehicle does have a vacuum diagram on the hood label. Certain years did that, and this one does have it. Make sure I press that down. This unit over here goes to basically an air tank. If your emissions is still working, this is what that's for. And you can pretty much line that up, and it will click right into place. This black line with a rubber tip on it. It's going to go right there on that vacuum tree. And then I have two broken lines. That's pretty common. This one right here is like a white plastic line and it goes down into this vacuum cluster. You can see it pretty much right here under that regulator fuel line. So what I'm going to do is get some 5 16ths or quarter inch vacuum hose and I'm going to cut it just a piece about an inch long and splice it in. That's pretty common when Ford put out these plastic vacuum lines. And I have one more to do, and that would be this red line right here. That's gonna go right to there. So I have to get some hose and connect that in also. So we got some 5 30 second vacuum line and we're gonna hook up what broke off. So I've got this red line that goes over to this emission valve. I'm hooking that up to the vacuum tree. And like I said before, this one has a vacuum diagram on it, so you can follow that. And then I have right here a piece of line that goes down to a white plastic line in here. So I'm going to take a piece of the 5 16 hose, try to give a good measurement to it. And let's give it a good connection here. Go over that vacuum tee. And I'm going to bring it right down. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can bring it up a little bit. There we go. And that T, that vacuum line right there. And I just put that line right on. It's easier on the plastic lines. It just slides right on. Let's disconnect that. 
Now we can run this this way. Back up. Not that it matters too much because the vacuum pump is disconnected, but we don't want any vacuum leaks off the manifold. All right, now we're ready to connect our battery negative terminal. That is a 5 16 or 8 millimeter. Make sure it's all the way snug down. Get our socket or wrench, and we will tighten it up. And we can run this and make sure we have no exhaust leaks or vacuum leaks. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.